Hey there, I'm Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and uh, today I've got a kind of a special treat for you, um, a preview of the Pilot Vanishing Point Stub Nib. That's right, Stub Nib. So it's pretty exciting. I actually got my hands on a sample for a very short period of time, a couple of months back, and I was able to shoot the footage for you that you're about to see, comparing it to a couple of other nibs and showing you how it writes and everything. Now, as of shooting this portion of the video, the nib is not even released yet. It's slated to come out in July of 2015 in both a rhodium plated as well as a black ion plated 18 karat gold nib. So it's going to be pretty exciting. It's going to be available as a separate nib unit so you can put it in your existing pens. So it's going to be pretty sweet. So here is a preview of the Pilot Vanishing Point stub. The Pilot Vanishing Point is really kind of a different pen than most other fountain pens because it's this click retractable nib, which is completely encased inside the body of the pen. There's no cap or anything to unscrew. So the way to take this nib unit out is you unscrew the pen in half, just like that, and the nib unit is inside. So you have two different parts to it. You have your converter or your cartridge, however you're using it, and then you have the nib unit up here. So this is the working end of the pen. And uh, on the stub nib, it's an, it's an 18 karat gold nib, uh, but it has a rhodium plating on it. So it's got kind of that silver color finish. Um, same 18 karat gold as you would have on any other Pilot Vanishing Point nib. Um, it's just that silver color. And uh, there's several different ways to fill this pen. You can use a uh, Pilot Namiki ink cartridge like this. They got a few different color options, not a ton, but they've got some. And that just fits into the pen like that push it down to get the ink going in there. And then there's this uh, metal cartridge cap, which comes with any vanishing point that you purchase, or you can buy it by itself if you don't already have one or you lose it or whatever. And that just goes in and you push it on top of the cartridge so that when you're using the click mechanism, that it will not harm the plastic cartridge. It just makes it a little more durable when you're doing that click mechanism. And then the other way, uh, the way that I have it right now is with the Pilot Con 50 ink uh, converter, which I have an uninked version of it right here. It's a piston converter, so it allows you to use bottled ink to fill with your vanishing point. And then the other option that there is, is the Con 20 uh, converter, which gets you a little more ink capacity than the piston Con 50, um, and it's an aerometric, a bladder converter, so it's squeeze. So you squeeze it like that. The only thing is it's kind of a tight fit on these vanishing point nibs, so you really got to press it on there pretty good. The other converter they have is the Con 70, which is this big guy right here, uh, but it will not fit inside the vanishing point, so can't use it for that one. So I've inked up my uh, vanishing point with the stub nib in my favorite ink, Pilot Hiroshizuku Con Pecky. You know, it's blue. I just love blue. Uh, but this ink performs pretty well. The Hiroshizuku inks themselves are really nice, and I thought it would you know, show, show some of the wetness and shading pretty well as opposed to using like a, a black ink or something. Um, so I've got it inked up in here already. And uh, I'll just go ahead and take it for a little test drive. Now I have played with it a bunch already, but um, it's gonna be a little wet right now because I just spilled ink all over my fingers as I was trying to fill it. So um, I'm gonna write with it just for a little bit so you can get a good feel for what's going on. So. I don't know officially what nib size this is. Um, they call it a stub, but I believe it's about a 1.0 based on kind of what other ones I've used. So it's a little bit on the finer side of what you would typically see. And I really um, kind of like the way that this writes, but it is a little bit different than some other stubs that are out there. Particularly just, I've noticed that with this pen and then with the Pilot Custom 912, the way that Pilot grinds some of their nibs is they're made to be held at a little bit higher angle. Um, I'm a very low angle writer, so I keep my pens really low and I tend to go fairly fast. Um, Pilot with some of their nibs, especially this stub, I've noticed that if you go low, you gotta write really slow. Otherwise, if you're writing too fast, you run into starting issues and skipping issues. So the little phrase that I came up with is you go low and slow with the pilot stub or you go high and light, okay? So the neat thing is if you write at kind of a steep angle, um, it actually writes pretty smooth. Now you really can't see me in the video writing with it very well, but it's going to write pretty darn smooth. 
The only thing is you're going to lose a little bit of the line variation. So the higher up you write, uh, the smoother it'll feel and the, the more consistent actually the ink flow will be. The lower you go, the more line variation you're gonna get. So if I'm writing really low like this on my cross stroke, I'm gonna get very thin lines. But if I'm writing really fast, I'm gonna get a little bit of skipping, a little bit of starting stuff if I'm writing really low. So the higher you go, the more reliable it's gonna be. But you're not going to get quite as much of that line variation. So you're really gonna to have to kind of play around with it. So it's, an, it's a very interesting nib. It's a different kind of stub than some of the other ones I've, I've written with before. So um, really kind of, kind of interesting. And it's, uh, it's fairly wet, I've found, as well. So I want to compare it to some other ones that I have here. So um, I have the Pilot Custom 912 with what's called the SU nib, it's the stub. And I find this stub to be very, very similar to this Vanishing Point stub, almost identical. Um, and this pen is significantly more expensive as well. Now granted, it's a whole different kind of pen, but um, it's, uh, it's the most closely comparable one because it's also a gold nib. So the Custom 912, this one actually has a 14 karat nib. And it's called the SU stub. And I think this one's about a 1.0 as well. Um, and this one uh, generally is kind of like what I was just describing with the vanishing point, where when you write higher, it's less line variation, a little bit wetter. Not quite to the same degree as the vanishing point one is, though. So the vanishing point, you can write almost vertically with that thing, and it writes pretty darn well. Um, but this one, you know, is a little bit lower. So I don't have an exact angle for you, but you know, the vanishing point, you probably want to write with that thing around a, I don't know, 70 degree angle, something like that. This one might be 60 degrees, if that helps at all. Um, but uh, very kind of similar, kind of comparable with that as well. Decent line variation, fairly wet. Um, and those are the two gold nib ones that I have to compare. Looking at the Vanishing Point and the Custom 912, you can see that the shape of the nib is really completely different. But if you look at the very, very tip, the ball that is um, welded on here, is very similar and the grind is done very similarly. That's why these two pens are gonna write fairly close uh, to each other. So you can see that tipping material on there and it's actually ground fairly flat, which makes it so that when you're holding it at a little higher angle, um, it's gonna be a little more consistent in its writing than it will be if you are writing at a very low angle. So just kind of the way that Pilot does their stuff, um, but very nice stub nibs to write with. Um, and then I also just, you know, for fun, I inked up a Vanishing Point broad nib just to give you an idea what is this stub actually doing in comparison to just a regular broad. So I threw a broad um, yellow gold nib in this metallic uh, green Vanishing Point. It's kind of a weird combination. It's not even sold in this combination, but I thought, what the heck, I can. So um, you can tell that it's a lot fatter. It's definitely smoother like this. It's very, very smooth, smooth as glass. The Vanishing Point stub, it's gonna have a lot more feedback to it. It is smooth, it's not scratchy or anything like that, but you definitely get more resistance writing than you do, say, with this broad nib. So that's something to kind of get used to. And then just the edges are not as crisp, you know? It's a, it's a big, round, fat nib. It's not going to have quite as much shading. It's not quite as wet. So it's, the ink is not going to look quite as dark in the broad, actually, as it does in the stub. So just kind of an interesting little thing going on there. I should probably write that it is the broad. 18K. And then I got a couple other pens that I wanted to compare. Um, one of them is I have a Noodler's Ahab with a Goulet 1.1 nib on it, just for comparison. So um, this is kind of a, it's kind of a hack because you're taking a Goulet nib and putting it on a Noodler's Ahab. Um, but uh, you know, it's something that a lot of people have done. Um, and uh, this one is gonna be very wet. So uh, should be interesting comparison. So Ahab, you can do this with the Ahab, the Conrad, or the Neponset. Um, with a Goulet. Very smooth, but very wet. And the line is gonna be a lot fatter than it is on the Pilot. 
And then for comparison as well, I have a Lamy All Star with a 1.1. That's another kind of popular stub comparison that I know a lot of a lot of you out there have. This is a stainless steel nib. You know, the pen is about a you know third of the price of the vanishing point pen anyway. Um, in this one, it's going to be lighter, so it's not as wet of a flow. Um, the lines are not quite as crisp as it is on the vanishing point stub, um, but uh, you know you still get some decent line variation on it. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Lamy 1.1. Um, and then the last one I have is a Pilot Prera with a 1.0 stub on it. So another Pilot one, but a stainless steel. And this one definitely is, is way drier. You can tell just in how light the ink color is here compared to these other ones. Even though it's still a 1.0, it's supposed to be fairly comparable to you know, in, in the nib grind anyway to the stub, but it's just so much drier of a flow that um, it's really kind of a whole different writing experience. And then kind of going back to the pilot vanishing point at the bottom. So the thing to watch out when you're using a stub as well is to be careful about the sensitivity of the rotation. When you're using a regular nib, it's a lot more forgiving as far as having the pen kind of back and forth in your hand like this. And the vanishing point in particular is one pen that's kind of interesting because because of the click retraction, it's got the, cl the clip, sorry, the click retraction, it's got the clip up at the grip end of the pen. So it's something you, you know, a lot of people kind of hold the pen in a different way than they might with some others just because of the um, the clip being there, but when you have a stub like this, you have to be careful not to over rotate the pen one direction or another. Otherwise, you're going to end up with skipping and starting and stuff like that. Like I'm rotating intentionally right now, and you're going to get some issues. So you have to kind of make sure that you're holding the pen really in kind of the sweet spot to make sure that it's in place there. Just another little factor to be careful of. Overall, though, it's a fantastic writing stub nib. I'm really glad that Pilot decided to come out with this and given the fact that the Vanishing Point is such a popular pen and this is a little bit finer stub that writes nice and wet, I think it's going to be a really, really phenomenal nib for you to consider. So there's a preview of the Pilot Vanishing Point stub. If you have any questions, you can leave comments on YouTube or on the blog. You can check out more details and purchase it if you are so interested at GouletPens.com. If you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and right on.